All right, tonight, guys, we're going to be looking at these JBL Stage A130 bookshelf speakers. <clears throat> I purchased these a couple months ago because uh, I had reviewed quite a few affordable and other budget bookshelf speakers, and I wanted to try something not only just had a lot of likes and stuff, but something that actually objectively measured well and uh, would be considered a proper, well-engineered speaker. So after looking around and ending up on a, a audio science review, these speakers came up. And um, I was willing to spend, you know, much more than I spent on these. At the end of the day, I was mostly after something that measured very well, um, you know, up to a certain price point, six, eight hundred dollars. These just so happen to measure better than most of the other speakers in those price ranges. And we're at the time, we're only 100, 180. I got these for 150 open box. Um, but go figure after a bunch of positive reviews and then really good measurements, JBL's cranked the price up to 300 now. Um, and I'll just tell you right now if you're wondering if you should buy these at, even at $300, yes. Um, just based on. <clears throat> and measurements alone and everything, uh, these outperform a lot of uh, other bookshelf speakers that cost a lot more, some over a thousand dollars that don't actually measure very well, and these do. So even at three hundred dollars, I don't like that JPL went and jacked the price up, and maybe it has nothing to do with the reviews and all that, but uh, I just have a gut feeling it does. But even at three hundred dollars. They're still a great deal just because there's a lot of other bookshelf speakers that cost, you know, many times as much and measure much worse. But JBL, if you, somebody from JBL see this, can you just push the price back down to at least like $200? i have been listening to them for the last couple months because I wanted to compare them to a lot of the other speakers, like I said, that uh, people like and have lots of good reviews. But they're liked subjectively, but objectively they actually measure quite poorly. So I wanted to try something that objectively measured quite well. And these also have good reviews. Let's uh, run down the specs real quick first. Get those out of the way. It's obviously a two-way, one-inch aluminum dome tweeter, rut chair, uh, five and a quarter or 5.25 inch polycellulose light rigid woofer, uh, high definition or HDI waveguide, this guy right here. And it's exactly what it says. It guides the waves, helps the tweeter out. Recommended amplifier power, 20 watts to 125 watts. Uh, frequency response, 55 hertz to 40 kilohertz. Uh, 55 hertz is plenty low for a bookshelf speaker. I'm not going to complain about that at all. 40 kilohertz, though, um, I don't know if they're just... Maybe that's just what it does, but it uh, really doesn't matter that it goes to 40 kilohertz. Sensitivity, 86 dB at 1 meter, 2.83 volts, which is pretty good. It's not low, it's not high, it's very acceptable. Uh, 6 ohms, crossover frequencies at 3.2 kilohertz or 3200 hertz. Obviously, well, not obviously, but it's ported on the rear, so it's considered a bass reflex. And then the 12 pounds each, and then the dimensions are in millimeters, but I'm not going to... Mostly, it's probably going to be American people watching, which we still use inches. So, 7.5 wide by about 12 and 5 eighths tall by 9 inches deep. So there's your dimensions. And then <clears throat> nice matte black, not black ash wood, but matte black finish. And then you can see even in the top there, it has the stage, uh, whatever, word in the top. Um, so people might notice that in passing. If you got some people gawking at your speakers. Very nice. Uh, typical cover. The... Pins are metal instead of plastic, which is nice. And there's six of them instead of four. Uh, very thin but rigid plastic frame, which is nice. Kind of keeps it a little bit low profile, fits the speaker well. And then even right here in front of the tweeter, they kind of left an opening as if they had some sort of measured performance even with the cover on. Because typically if you're, if you're listening critically, you usually listen with your covers off. But um, yeah, I, I don't have any way to tell or not, but... Uh, I don't see why they would go to the extra work of leaving this out unless it was causing some sort of issue with the tweeter. So good on JBL to actually make an, uh, a grill that has uh, sound quality in mind, I guess. And then we'll move around back. Very large flared port. 
uh, from what I can tell, it's flared in both ends. I won't be taking the speakers out because uh, before we get too far into the back, they have these, you know, the waveguide has no screw holes. It's glued on over the tweeter. And then the woofer has this beauty ring covering the screws. And it's also, from what I can tell, is glued in and trying to pry on it and stuff. It's just plastic. So far, I haven't had any success try, uh, getting it off, obviously. Um, and what I have tried seems to kind of mar the plastic a little bit. So right now I'm not going to mess with it because I don't want to crack the plastic or anything. Just going to have to... You beat me, JBL. Nice going. We'll take the terminal cup out of the back and try to take a gander in from the rear. Ha ha ha. And see what we can see from the back. But yeah, very large flared port. Um, by shining a flashlight in there, it, it is uh, flared on both ends. Um, then there's your JBL Stage A130 badge. Only good information or any relevant information on there this is the impedance six ohms and it's really small no specs no nothing else so i don't know what that's about um and then there's your standard terminal cup and you can tell they uh use this terminal cup and other stuff because this is actually a bi wire bi amp terminal cup it just doesn't have the extra uh binding post up here but it works i mean it's not hurting anything but i when i first see them like that's a large termination cup for only one set i'm like oh that's supposed to be two sets there but it works it's not hurting anything and then your it's typical uh binding posts which we'll do let me grab some speaker wires with some full length banana plugs these are bfa style banana plugs but still um, typically your better banana plugs are all generally uh, roughly the same length and We'll put these in, just like I do on a lot of other speaker, my other speaker reviews. And yeah, that's all the further. They only go in about halfway. So, very nice speaker, but um, yeah, not good. The only reason I don't like this is when the, uh, the banana plug is only halfway into the binding post. Uh, you lose a lot of support. And hopefully, if you, I mean, if you got big, heavy gauge wire, like these are 10 gauge wires, so they're kind of heavy. And this is going to be... You know hanging on there if a cat or a dog or kid or whatever to uh, pull on these you got a lot of stress on a banana plug in binding post that's only really making half the amount of contact and support it should have so I don't I wish a lot of these I don't <laughs> it must be a lot more expensive just to make uh, binding posts that are deep enough I'm not sure why all these budget speakers have and it's not just budget. I've had uh, some other speakers in the past that were a little more mid-range, and they still have these, well, let's just say, crappy binding posts. I've already replaced them on this one to different ones. You can see these are gold. Uh, these ones are not still not all the way, but they're better than what was on there. I was just a shot in the dark because I wanted something better, and these looked uh, like they would ex uh, accept full depth, and you know, and they don't on the, uh, I don't remember if I got these on Amazon or whatever, they don't list how deep they are, so I just was kind of taking a shot in the dark, but they're not as deep as I'd like, but they're they're deeper than the original, so I guess I can live with them. And the reason these are different is about 10 minutes into testing these, I put them in my bedroom, and if you have uh, anyone that's a cat owner has a cat, it's, uh, for sometimes and for no reason, cats just freak out and start doing parkour all over the house. Um, hook these up in the bedroom because I test in the bedroom, in the living room, and down here, three different spaces. Um, the environment you put the speakers in tends to have a lot to do with how they sound. So I don't want to just test down here in a basement where it's heavily treated because it's not going to sound anything like a normal, a normal living room or bedroom. But anyway, I hooked them up in the bedroom, put on some Primus Winona's Big Brown Beaver, and it was a little louder than I thought. Came on, cat freaked out, jumped off the bed, parkoured off the speaker stand, launched out the door, speaker tipped forward uh, off the stand, speaker tumbled off front of the stand, the wire was still in the back, well, I, those are, are flipped, but the wire was in the back. And, you know, when the speaker came down, the wire caught it for a second and, you know, and then the speaker, luckily it, it dropped the speaker to the floor, but the wire caught it just before it hit the floor. So they caught the wire and then came off and hit the floor and then uh, picked it up and went to pull the wire out and the binding posts had busted.
Uh, I don't have the other half of the black one, but uh, you can see down in there, uh, as you can see on these, there's supposed to be the kind of the barrel in there, down in here. It's gone. It broke off and it came out. Um, and then the bottom of the black ones, I think I threw it away because it, it's a really, a lot of these binding posts and stuff are made out of pretty much just like a cast pot metal with a gold uh, plating. So it pretty much, the metal just crumbled. But that kind of sucked. So I bought a set of these, I think it was like a couple bucks on Amazon. And they're pretty much a direct replacement. As you can see, um, they just, this is an original one, just has a stud the bolt that goes through with this spade and these are pretty much the exact same thing so all i did was pop the terminal cup out and unscrewed the other ones and took the wire off and screwed these in i think it took 10 minutes to replace them with these and if you're wondering why the terminal cup is upside down it's because i have a child and pets and they seem to just get into everything even if you hide the wires and tuck them in and all this it's just, you can't imagine it. Well, you can if you have kids and pets, but they just get into everything and ruin everything sometimes. So I noticed by putting them upside down, well, it does two things that I like. Well, here, we'll start over here. When you have them in like this, your wires come up from the floor or whatever, and they're, you know, they kind of hang like that, and the wire's kind of always pulling down on them. It probably doesn't hurt them, but it bugs me. Some OCD like that. If you just take the cups out, on almost every speaker I've had or I build, I always put the binding posts upside down. And that way the wires come up and go straight in. It's not really an issue. Any decent binding post and banana plug, which is pretty much going to be all of them, there's going to be enough tension there. The wire's not going to vibrate out or just fall out or anything. And the wire comes up from the stand and goes straight in. It doesn't have to loop over. Not usually a big deal with smaller, thinner gauge light wire, but heavier wires that can, you know, they hang there and can put a lot of stress on the banana plug and binding post. Like I said, it probably would never really hurt it, but I, I'm just OCD in that way. This just makes more sense to me. It comes straight up and goes straight into the speaker, and it actually, um, you can actually get them a little bit closer to the wall this way if you're in that sort of situation. And kids and pets tearing around the house do get somehow get caught on the cord when they're pointed down. And something gets caught on them they just pull right out where are these this way if they're up like this and something's to get caught on them and pull on them they're not gonna be able to come out it's just gonna bust them off so uh, this for me you can try it if you like or make comments about how stupid I am for doing it this way but this is the way I like to do it it just it looks more aesthetically pleasing to me and to me it's, it's a little safer just because if something were to get caught on this wire and it's bookshelves, it might actually pull the whole you know, speaker over depending on how sturdy and big your stands are. Towers, probably not, especially if they're heavy. But if something gets caught on that cord, they just easily come out. So that's my two cents on something. My little life hack or whatever you want to call it, something I do. So if you wonder why all my terminals are upside down with the binding posts upside down, that's why. So I think that covers the outside let's take a closer look at the fronts there's the one inch aluminum dome tweeter and to me it just looks like a soft dome with an aluminum contact on it like they just glued an aluminum contact lens over a soft dome but whatever works and then you obviously you have a um i don't know if that's is that a phase plug i'm having a brain fart and then obviously waveguide I don't know if this is considered part of the waveguide or is this some sort of face plug and comment down below. Uh, but yeah, and then five and a quarter inch polycellulose rigid lightweight woofer with nice fat rubber, uh, nice soft fat rubber surround, beauty ring to hide all the screws. I do like that they made the pinholes for the grills nice and small, very, uh, they don't attract much attention to themselves. I'm not going to, I'm not going to. I don't know, diss them or whatever because they don't have magnetic grill covers. Uh, magnetic grill covers are cool and nice, but I don't really care. Uh, oh, looks like brushed aluminum, but it's not. There's your JBL badge down at the bottom. Uh, I got mine open box, so I don't know if the JBL does include little rubber feet or not. Mine didn't, so I, I like to use these little felt feet on the bottom. So I stuck some felt feet on there. And away we go. Now, I've probably been listening to these for... Uh, probably two months now, maybe a little bit longer. So I think I got them in 
or no, I think I got them in February, sometime in February, I don't remember. Um, and I just wanted to try something, because all the other bookshelf speakers and stuff I've had, from what I can find of anyone that's actually measured them, I mean, what I can measure is very limited, uh, properly measure them with actual instrument-grade equipment like a mirror from Audio Science Review or Gene from Audioholics or Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner, name dropping like crazy. Um, I can't measure like what them guys do. I don't have the equipment or the knowledge. Um, so I went in search of something uh, that had been measured and I wanted to try something that objectively was engineered properly, measures properly what you would look for in a, you know, a, a flat response, you know, to... Uh, and flat doesn't mean the speaker's going to be flat sounding. When they say flat response, it just means the speaker is going to be transparent. It's not going to have excessive highs or lows and some weird frequency response. The, fr the response is going to be fairly flat, so all the frequencies are going to be about even, which makes the speaker what they would call transparent. It's not going to color the signal from the amplifier or the sound. You know, Some people are fine with their audio gear, be it a DAC amp, speakers coloring the sound one way or another, making it warm or cool or whatever. Um, and then other people want their audio gear to be just resolving and transparent. So it's reproducing as best as it can what exactly is in the file or CD or on the vinyl, etc. I wanted to try something that was measured measurably transparent. These supposedly... Uh, I don't think Audio Science Review is the only one that measures. I think there's someone else that's measured them too. But they measure very well. So, and I'm not going to give you <laughs> any uh, subjective adjectives on these warm, buttery, chocolatey, sexy, all these stupid audiophile words that really don't mean anything. But to me, and it might just be because I've seen the measurements before I bought them because that's what I was you know, basing this purchase off of. But they do seem like a very neutral speaker. They're not overly bassy or boomy or, you know, oh, here we go, muddy or whatever. The bass seems clean, responsive, accurate. And when I say realistic, you know, like if you're listening to a live performance and there's a guy slapping a bass string or hitting a snare drum, it seems like it sounds exactly like it should. And it's the same thing with the highs. They're not overly bright or fatiguing they're not you know soft and dull or any of that they seem to be just pretty neutral like they're just spitting out exactly what was uh you know uh you know engineered and recorded on the cd or whatever source you're you're you know listening from now a lot of that's going to have to do with the quality of the source you know crappy crappy uh or poorly made music uh is always kind of going to sound poorly or if it's the mp3 or whatever um, but going through my run of the mill of songs i listen to and i mostly listen to you know classic rock newer rock i listen to about everything except for like country and polka <laughs> um, but and i ha i don't really have any complaints i you know i listen to jazz you know blues rock even some mariachi uh, band, which I'm not sure why, but I've become slightly fascinated with mariachi music. <laughs> you know, heavy rock, like Slipknot, Mudvayne, Seven Dust, all the way down to classic rock, like Eagles, Doors, The Who, you know, all of them. And I've gone through a ton of music on them, and I can't really say any genre I have any complaints. It, could they use a woofer? Yes, depending on the room. Down here in my basement where everything's well-treated, and I have, you know acoustic treatment everywhere um and it's a basement so it's very rigid and inert you know there's no not much for vibration or reflections uh subwoofer would help them oh there goes the air conditioning uh in my living room it's a little bit bigger not as well treated by just adjusting the distance to the wall because of the rear port um i could probably live without a subwoofer in there but i would still be one of those things like if these were going to be my primary speakers I would just I would use them as is and then just save up and add a sub to them. Really, realistically, in any case, if you're going to be that serious, um, you'd probably want to add a subwoofer to them. But re unless you're super picky, getting down to 55 hertz, mm, I think most people could probably live without a sub with these at least for a while. And you can always just add one in later. 
Uh, yeah, I don't. I haven't had any issue with them. Uh, I can test. It says six ohms. Let me grab a multimeter and see. We'll test them. See what the see what they actually test. Because most most of the time, what they rate these, it's not it's not what they say. Yeah, they list them as six ohms, but they're four point five ohms, which is fine. Uh, I realist, I think anything above three, three and a half is fine. Uh, there might be some amplifiers that have problems with uh, lower, but four and a half is fine. I think most amplifiers won't have an issue driving these. Uh, anything I didn't like about them, uh, I mean, having the port on the rear uh, obviously is helping their form factor. Uh, I, I'm more of a fan of front ported designs, but it's not really not really that big of a deal. They do have a rounded front edge here. Uh, as you can see, this helps prevent uh, edge diffraction, which does help the response. I was kind of worried because I try not to be, you know, I try not to get on the bandwagon with things that I haven't really experienced too much. I've built quite a few speakers, but I've never really used metal domes. Um, and just because of this, the stigma or whatever that metal domes are harsh and bright and airy and can be fatiguing and I yeah, I had that in the back of my head when I got these because they're an aluminum dome but I also know loom or metallic or metal dome tweeters can work very well if they're just done properly so the being even though they're an aluminum dome tweeter I did have not found them to be fatiguing or shrill or any of that at all or sibilant or whatever they say um, I did say we'll pull out a pull out a cross uh, terminal cup so we can look in the back uh, first thing I noticed on these, the out of probably all the speakers I reviewed, the wire coming off of the main terminals to the crossover board, and even coming off your crossover board going to your speakers is heavier gauge wire than I've seen on a lot of other ones. I'm gonna guess it's probably 14 or 16 gauge. Um, and then you have a small air core inductor here. I don't know, it looks like probably 22 or 24 gauge wire, um, and then a tweet uh, cap. I'm going to guess these two are for, in the resistor, are possibly for the tweeter. I'm not sure. The resistor may be there just to achieve a certain ohm rating. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, these two are probably for, well, technically, they don't, they don't state what the crossover is as far as order. It's looking like it's just a, possibly a second order on the tweeter and a second order on the woofer because you have an iron core inductor here and another cap. So this could be for the woofer, tweeter, and then resistor for overall ohm rating. I'm not sure. I can't, I guess I could take the board off, but I can't really see the traces on the back and kind of and trace down what's going where. So possibly I could rebuild these because you could just unsolder on the back side, put a better, uh, better quality, even like an 18 gauge air corn ductor, and then replace these caps with some better film and foil caps. These are just cheap electrolytic caps, but what it's kind of funny is some of the other budget speakers like the Pioneers and the Sonys actually have better components on the crossover but still measure worse. This is kind of just goes to show that you don't always need top-notch crossover components to make a speaker that measures well. These are definitely not top-notch crossover components yet these speakers measure very well. So whether it's a combination of the JBL engineers picking parts that work well together and then you know, designing a competent, well-engineered crossover to work with them, you can still get a good end result without a lot of expensive parts. Uh, may, that may not always be the case, but they uh, made it happen this time, so kudos to them for that. And I may just replace all these components, because there's not many components there. You could replace all these components for probably not much. Probably with shipping on both, for both speakers, maybe 20 bucks, 30 bucks. Big old magnet on the woofer. Vented pull piece. It kind of helps a little bit. Decent sized woofer. There's your tweeter up there. If it'll, if it'll focus here. Let me move the mag. Let me move the flashlight again. I'm trying to shine the flashlight or the light down in the porthole here. And of course, it's not really wanting to focus. Maybe we'll try it this way. Down inside here, like that. 
And there you can see the tweeter. And of course, there we go. It's focusing on it. A uh, small motor structure with some sort of plastic brace on the back. It might have to do with the wave gut on the front. Usually, if the magnet motor structure is that small, it's probably doesn't really necessarily mean it's bad. Could just be a neodymium magnet and non-ferro cooled or something. I don't know if you can kind of see it even when I just set it here like that. Nothing really out of the ordinary that we've seen on other budget bookshelf speakers. Material thickness or cabinet thickness, I'm going to guess probably probably 5 eighths. Yeah, chamfered out here around the terminal cup is half, so with the extra lip, it's 5 eighths. Uh, which is decent thickness. Um, kind of wish they had a brace in there. I mean, I can't really, I mean, I can't really critique them too much for how they're built or anything because proof's in a put, proof is in the pudding. They've already been tested and they're fine the way they are. I <laughs> thought about putting, you know, changing the, the stuffing and putting a brace in them. But realistically, when you go to any of these places that have properly measured them there's no reason to i mean they already the way they are they measure quite well so i mean you could try like i said as they come they're pretty dang good there's not really any reason to mess with them that's the way i'm on the fence right now about replacing those crossover components because even though they are budget crossover components they're doing their job the speaker measures well i don't know if replacing them with audio grade crossover components would make a difference to the point where it's audible it might measure slightly better but whether that in practice is audible probably not um, you might think it is because you know there's better components in there but uh, realistically it's probably not something that's going to make such a difference that it's actually audible good job jbl as far as i know the these speakers measure and sound these are i would take them over the sony cs5s if I had the money, you know, if I was still on that, if a smaller budget of, you know, 100 to $120, I'd probably still, the Sony CS5s would probably still be my number one if I was stuck at that budget. But, you know, if I was able to wait a little longer or already had the money to spend two, $300, um, and even with these, I could have spent much more. I was willing to spend probably six or $800 um, for a speaker that measured really well and just happened to come across these. They measured very well so i just decided to go with these and i'm completely satisfied with them i don't see any reason to get rid of them they will probably uh the sony cs5s have moved upstairs in the living room these will probably be my main speakers down here other than all my my diy speakers i do and other stuff but um probably these will probably be my main speakers i use to try out different amplifiers and stuff on just because they are fairly transparent and a fairly honest speaker so any uh, questions or comments, put them down below. Uh, I did some, I thought in a, one of the Adele, it's the Adele a mil Million Years Ago song, her voice. I use that song because her voice hits this low range resonance or this low range that tends to cause resonance in a lot of speakers. Um, the cabinet, you can it causes the cabinet and sometimes you know, woofers to kind of whoa, whoa, whoa kind of thing that's really annoying that song tends to bring it out in a lot of speakers that aren't built properly thought i was hearing a buzzing or something with that song with these speakers and it was driving me nuts for a couple days and i have pa or professional audio style stands and it all it was was one of the uh the uh turn knobs or whatever that you, you tighten down once you get them had somehow come loose so once i snug that up a little vibration was gone but before that i even Speakers that tend to have a resonance or something in where I think the cabinet is vibrating too much or whatever, I'll go out and get a wood clamp and place two boards, two like two by four on each side, and clamp it and squeeze it on the side. Not too hard, but just clamp it. And that will, instead of go, going to all the work of bracing it on the inside and then finding out it didn't do anything, you, I can quickly grab a wood, uh, wood clamp and, uh, you know, two pieces of wood and put them on there, clamp them, and squeeze it a little bit, and that'll stop the sides and even the tops if the speaker's large enough, and then listen to it again and see if it's changed. And I did that with these, and it, it didn't change because all along it, it was the uh, the speaker stand. So uh, anyway, that's it. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. It'll be linked in the description. 
I think I actually list link or posted a picture of these with the clamps and everything on them when I was messing with them. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for another video. Later, guys.